so i just wanted to spend a little more time and sort of elaborate on what we said uh, towards the end of the last video regarding you know how increasing the temperature either leads to more dissolution of the solute or or more crystallization in that particular solvent depending on depending on whether the the dissolution process is endothermic or or exothermic so so let's go back to the example of of sodium chloride and water sodium chloride and water so we said that as sodium chloride uh, is introduced into the solvent into water here the this this the solute particles basically break up into um sodium plus ions and and chloride minus ions so this this is not as simple as it sounds because you know as you know these two ions are held together by these really strong forces of attraction that is the ionic bond between them so it actually takes up quite a bit of energy for this bond to break and and go into the solution so so this this step here actually takes up quite a lot of energy takes up a lot of energy so meanwhile these these water uh, molecules in in the solvents they have to basically move around to give way to the solute particles that are being introduced into the solvent so so what happens in that process is so we know that water molecules are themselves held together by these uh, weak hydrogen bonds and uh, breaking these bonds is not as difficult obviously as the ionic the strong ionic bonds but still i mean it does take up some energy so so this this uh, breaking of these um, interactions the the uh, you know solvent solvent interactions also takes up a little bit of energy so takes up energy even here so you can consider you know these two as two endothermic sub processes in in dissolution so both of them actually take up energy this is a lot takes up a lot of energy and this doesn't as much but together they are endothermic so you are breaking you are breaking uh, bonds in both cases so now to compensate for these two processes you have the the solvation process so water molecules arrange themselves immediately around these ions in in a particular manner to uh, maximize the the um, sort of so attractive interactions between these ions and the water molecules so this this uh, this uh, so what we call the solvation process is is in fact um, exothermic so it it releases energy so it releases energy and it is exothermic so so depending on whether this um this attractive interaction between the solute particles and the solvent molecules whether that actually releases enough energy to more than compensate for the um energy spent in breaking these bonds here depending on that the reaction is going to be endothermic or exothermic as a whole so in case of sodium chloride this whole dissolution process is is actually slightly endothermic by slight we mean the uh, delta h solution that we were talking about is is about plus 3.9 kilojoules per mole so this is not uh, a lot so what you notice in a um, endothermic reaction in general as we all know is there is a drop in temperature because you know the this this particular process is is picking up energy from the surrounding so as a result the temperature goes down but in uh, you know in this example in this particular example of sodium chloride dissolving in water you may not be actually able to detect a huge decrease in a big decrease decrease in in temperature but if you take for example salts like ammonium nitrate just for general knowledge ammonium nitrate is um, in fact used in you know cold packs let's say you have some muscle injury or you know you go to the doctor and the doctor says okay why don't you put a cold pack and, and um, so these cold packs typically have um, a, a sack or a pouch of ammonium nitrate and then uh, you, it's surrounded by water and then what they ask you to do is basically break this pouch or, uh, so that the, the salt comes in contact with water and dissolves and it so happens that the the enthalpy of solution for delta h solution for ammonium nitrate is is uh, really high in you know positively really high so it's it's a highly endothermic uh, dissolution process so in this case delta h solution is um, is is about um, 25 kilojoules per mole 
a delta x solution this high you can actually stick in a thermometer inside that and uh, detect a sharp decrease in temperature and so that's how cold packs work so they um, they immediately cool down quite a lot and give relief to whatever you know wherever you are placing it on your skin so so you can also have salts such as calcium chloride for example this is one salt that is in fact used in heat packs so what happens here is the process of dissolution in water is highly exothermic here the delta h solution is about negative 80 kilojoules per mole so it uh, it releases quite a lot of energy it, it the the energy that is released because of the solute solvent interactions is clearly much higher than the energy spent in breaking all these bonds so so you get the idea so this is what we mean by um endothermic dissolution and exothermic dissolution so so in in cases like sodium chloride and ammonium nitrate where the overall delta h solution is is greater than 0 endothermic increase in temperature you are basically facilitating breaking of more of these bonds here by giving it you know more more energy by increasing the temperature so the the process actually moves forward and causes more dissolution to happen but in cases like calcium chloride where the dissolution is exothermic and uh, delta h is less than 0 in this case increasing the temperature is going to cause the the process to go backwards these chloride ions and calcium ions are going to recombine and form uh, solute particles like calcium chloride compound and then come out of the solution so that in that case you are uh, actually going backwards